something else to remember. I wish I had a balloon pump here, but balloon pump is basically this rectangle machine on wheels and it has its own monitor. A lot of times you will see this kind of a waveform. You will see your EKG on there. You will see the amount of gas in there. You will see how it's inflating. You'll see the augmentation. You'll see all the pressures. I'll put up, I'll pull it up on, on the screen so you guys could see. But you're going to see all this and you're going to see some stuff that says unassisted, unass unassisted, assisted. And it's going to give you two different systolics, two different diastolics. It's going to give you your augmentation. It's going to give you your map. So something to always remember is that your unassisted systolic blood pressure is going to be ideally lower than your balloon augmentation. Another thing is your augmented diastolic pressure is going to be lower than the unassisted diastolic pressure. And also the assisted systolic pressure is going to be lower than the unassisted pressure. So your patient's intrinsic or unassisted pressures, they're going to be greater than the pressures that the balloon pump is, is helping with. So all your assisted pressures are going to be less than your patient's normal pressures. Because remember, heart is, is pressure. If you have a high pressure, the heart's working harder. So the goal with the balloon pump is to decrease the pressures, except for the one time when the balloon pump is inflated and it's helping perfuse the coronaries. During that time, we want to have a high pressure because to push that blood. But all the other pressures we're going to want want higher. All the working pressures, we could say all the working pressures of the heart and the systolic pressures, we want those to be lower. This is the, you could say the relaxing pressure. We want those to be, we want those super high as well because that's going to be an issue as well. But we want them to be a little bit higher to help better perfuse the heart and help the heart work a little bit better versus the working pressure systolics. We want those to be to be lower so the heart has to work as hard as I have to push past those pressures as hard as I have to pump as hard. So the one last thing I want to go over is, is this little diagram here. So this is your intraaortic bloom pump waveform. So when you go look at this, you're also going to see how it's paired up with your, with your um, EKG, ECG. So this waveform, this is the waveform your bloom pump produces on the monitor. And this is a waveform that you should understand. And it should look like this. This one is a one to two. So as we put our patient to a one to one, which is with every cardiac cycle, we are assisting them. So as we put them to one to two, where it's every other beat, we're assisting them. We also might do one to three, which is every third beat we are assisting them, depending on how sick they are. Usually patients start off at a one to one, then we slowly move them to a one to two. So what's happening here? So the first, you can say up wave is going to be your, under, this one's one to two. So your first up wave here, these two right here are going to be your unassisted systole. So this is the patient's regular unassisted systole. This is your patient's systolic regular blood pressure. One on the bottom here, this is your unassisted aortic and diastolic pressure. So this is unassisted. So this, you could say this is your, your unassisted heartbeat. This is your, your cardiac cycle of what's going on with your patient when it's he's just regular. No balloon pump interference, no balloon pump assistance. This big one. So now you have your balloon pump working. This is your diastolic augmentation pressure. So you know how we said it, we augment things to make it greater. So we're making the diastolic pressure greater. See how it's above the other pressures because now the balloon pump is inflated and we are increasing this pressure so that we can better perfuse the, the coronary arteries. And then it drops, and this is your assisted aortic and diastolic pressure. You know how I mentioned that we want the pressures to be lower? See where the patient's unassisted diastolic pressure was right here. Now with the blue pump's assistance, it looks a lot lower, right? So this is the bloom pump's assisted aortic and diastolic pressure. And this is where we have a drop in, in myocardial oxygen demand. So... We went from a high pressure, remember, we're filling this balloon pump, we're pushing the, the blood just for a little bit, just for a little bit because we want that blood to be pushed over there. We want a higher pressure to better perfuse coronaries. Then it drops, here's this diastolic pressure, and then top the balloon pump, then deflates. And this one is going to be also lower than the unassisted systolic pressure. 
maybe I should drill a little bit lower, but to me when I was drawing this, it looked like it was lower. So, so ultimately, your assisted systolic is going to be lower than your unassisted systolic pressure. Like I said, the pressures want to, we want to make the pressures as low as we can to prevent added stress on the heart, make it pump more effectively, more efficiently, and want to dec decrease the systolic and diastolic pressure, except for one instance where we are augmenting diastolic pressure to then better perfuse the coronaries. So that, guys, is my rundown of the intro aortic bloom pump. It took me a long time to finally be able to understand this, so hopefully I did a good job of explaining to you. Hopefully you gained some insight, some knowledge about it, but this is a really fascinating machine. It's really cool once you fully understand it. It's really, really scary in the, the beginning, but once you understand it, why we do it, how it works, how the waveform looks, what are, what are we actually trying to do with this, it's a lot It's a lot easier to understand. You actually feel like, okay, now I kind of understand when physicians ask me about this or they tell me this, or now I understand the plan of care because the balloon pump's supposed to do this, or even with troubleshooting. What's going on with with the balloon pump? Why is it why is it alarming? Is there no waveform? Is it not inflating? Is that deflating? Is the timing off? Is it is it supposed to be set to one to one? But I had it set to one to two. So I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation on the intro aortic balloon pump, and I wish you guys best of luck. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please reach out to me. Thank you so much.